Mike dumped Natalie on their freaking wedding day. Oh my God, you guys, 90 Fiance was on not so long ago and this season is freaking unbelievable. So much stuff went down, but the first thing we have to talk about is Mike and Natalie because on the last episode, their relationship, believe it or not, was kind of smooth sailing. Everything was going well. They were four or five days away from their wedding. They agreed to just have a wedding in, in Mike's backyard because of everything going on, the stay-at-home pandemic. So they were like, let's just get married here. They were kind of happy. Natalie was sad that her mom and friends and family we could not be there, but they were for the most part pretty happy until the day of their wedding. Mike went to Natalie and said, hey, Natalie, you know what? I'm just not ready. I cannot marry you. The guy had 90 days, not, not you know, 30, not 60. He had 90 days. He literally waited like the 85th day of the 90 days to tell her that he's not going to marry her. He told her on the freaking wedding day. And so what do you think happened? Natalie was hysterical. She was mad. She was sad. She was out of her mind hysterical. We got to see her call the officiant, Teresa, of the wedding, and she just explained what happened. He pulled her to the side, he said he's not ready, and she was just incredibly mad, and then that was it, and they were done. Supposedly, Mike was crying, Natalie was crying, and then the neighbor, Tamara, I think her name, she came over and she was crying. So it's just like, oh my god, the thing that bugs me. Now, y'all already know, I'm not a fan of Natalie. In fact, I can't stand Natalie, but the thing I will say that bugs the crap out of me on Mike's side is, dude, you had 80. 85, 85 days, and you had to tell her on the wedding, I mean, the one day, the wedding day, you couldn't have told her the week before or a couple days, the freaking wedding day. Now, I get it that it, it, now 90 days, 85 days, whatever you want to call it, it's not a lot of time, but still, did you really have to tell her that on the freaking wedding day? Why couldn't you told her a day or two earlier? So that was, for me, was kind of like, you know what, Mike, that was kind of rude. That was kind of uncalled for. I get it that you don't have a lot of time to work with, but still, you should have given her more of a heads up and just said, look, you know, what I would have done if I was Mike, now I'm not Mike, but if I was Mike, I would have just said, let's just date. You go home, you know, and we'll just continue the relationship if we want to, try to make it better, and then maybe we'll try to get another K-1 visa. It probably wouldn't have been the cheapest decision, but they have no business getting married, so Mike, he waited to the freaking 85th day, their wedding day, and he dumped her. And so we got to see Natalie pack her bag. She was upset. She was crying. The neighbor, Tamara, came over, who apparently was going to be Natalie's, you know, um, maid of honor, I guess. I was going to say best woman, but I, that's the that's best man. It has to be the maid of honor. And she was going to be the maid of honor, and they're kind of like building a friendship. And it looks like Natalie is leaving to go stay with Tamara, I think, for a day or so. Then she's going to fly to just Europe, and then she's going to try to go to Ukraine. So I don't know what she's going to do. Now, here is the crazy thing. Spoiler, spoiler, spoiler alert, but we have all heard that Mike and Natalie do end up getting married. So I just still am standing here saying, I don't know if that was fake or if it was just a rumor, or if I don't freaking know. Now, there's a lot of things that could happen, but what I, I could see happening is if Mike and Natalie do end up getting married, I could see Natalie, she's going to go stay over at Tamara's house, who's the next door neighbor, because she said she did not want to stay in Mike's house. She did not feel comfortable. She was so upset at Mike, she didn't want to even see him again. So she, she's going to go stay with the neighbor, and I would not be shocked if Mike bags and bags and bags, and finally they end up kind of getting together, and then, then like the next day they end up getting married. I don't know, but I will just say it just seems kind of fishy. How could these rumors, there are public documents out that Mike and Natalie, they did get married. So it's like, okay, if she's going to leave, how do they freaking get married? But up until this point, they have broken up. We have seen crazier things happen on 90 Fiance. So I would not be shocked if she does go back to Ukraine. I have no idea, but they are not together at this point. So we're going to have to wait and see. But comment below what y'all think, because we can put the rumors aside for a minute and let's just talk. What do you guys think is going to happen with Mike and Natalie? Will they stay together? Will they break up for good? Comment below what y'all think. And if you thought that was all the drama we had this episode, oh my God, you wouldn't believe it because we got to see Andrew and Amira. Amira flew to Serbia. She has been in Serbia for a couple days. There's all these craziness, riots, and all this stuff going on. I don't know if that was actually near her hotel, but TLC, 90 Day Fiance, they were showing these videos of craziness stuff going on in Serbia. But like I said, I don't know if that was near her or not. Either way, I get it. It's kind of scary. Foreign country, you don't know where you're at. So I get that from Amira's side. And she was uncomfortable and she wasn't having a good time. And she was claiming that Andrew refused to call her and they were talking very little and she was very lonely. And this is when it goes back to the he said, she said crap with Amira and Andrew. I don't know who to believe. So I am not going to 
to believe either of them. But apparently, you know, Andrew was acting like he was showing her all this love, and then Amira was acting like he wouldn't call her, so I don't freaking know. But either way, she was in Serbia quarantined for 14 days. The weird thing is, she was not quarantining because she was walk freaking walking around. But anyway, she was walking around the city because she supposedly could not get any food to her hotel. Which, if that's true, that sounds god awful. So once again, I'm not picking sides, I'm just saying what they both are saying went down. Finally, we got to see Andrew and Amira talk, and I don't know why on earth they had this conversation then, but when she was in Serbia quarantining to come to America, they had decided to have a conversation about having children. I don't know why. And, you know, Amira was acting like she's just not really ready, and she really didn't say anything about Andrew's parenting. The way I perceived it was she was saying, I want to come to America, I want to make have our relationship work, and then we can talk about children. Maybe I heard it wrong. I have no idea because Andrew took that and ran with it like like she was saying like, that he's not going to be a good father. And I heard that and I was like, did she just, I don't, I don't think she even said that. So that's how he perceived it. Maybe she said that. We didn't hear it. I don't know. But Andrew was just freaking so upset and offended and he was all mad. And I was like, did she just say that? But either way, they had that conversation. I have no idea why in the past two years they could not have that conversation, but she was going to get on the flight. Finally, the 14 days went by and I thought with all the craziness with her food and everything going on how she couldn't get food she couldn't get room service all that stuff I was like well there's no way no way she's gonna wait the 14 days I thought she was gonna leave early and go back to France but she waited the 14 days supposedly and Andrew was like okay she's gonna be on the plane you know any minute and then all of a sudden we wake up the next day and guess what Amira does not get on the plane now if that is true if the, if Amira does not get on the plane because what we got to see was Andrew he woke up he was freaking out puttering around the camera crew was grabbing their cameras and then they were like what happened and Andrew was like she didn't get on the plane she's not on the plane and then of course guess what happened they cut to the other couple so we really have no idea what happened we did see see Amira in an airport. Obviously, she has to leave Serbia. One way, if she's going to France or coming to America, she needs to be in an airport. So that doesn't really tell me that she is coming to America. Now, I have seen paperwork and all this crap like months and months and months ago that it looked like it said Amira came to America. I don't even freaking know what I saw. It must have been fake if she doesn't end up coming. I thought she came here. Maybe I was wrong. And that's what I say about Mike and Natalie and every other couple. You just never know what's going to happen until we freaking see it. So apparently Amira doesn't get on her flight. She must go back to France and that will probably be the end of their relationship. Now, I am just wondering, if I was Amira, just come here. Come here for 90 days and you don't, don't marry the guy. Why would she not come here? Now, I get it if she was getting cold feet and this and that, but you flew to Mexico, you flew to Serbia, and you're not going to get out one more flight to come to America. That doesn't, it just, I don't even know if that just sounds fishy or just flat out stupid. Get on a freaking flight, come to America. If you like it, stay. If not, go back to France. So if she does not get on this plane to America, I will be deeply disappointed in Amira. Even if you can't stand Andrew, just give it a give it a freaking shot. Come for a month, try it out. If you don't like the guy, don't marry him and go back home. But it, I don't even know. That would honestly really make me mad if I was Andrew. But I, I can I can see where Amira is coming from, kind of. But honestly, it's just like, dude, just come to America, check it out, and then make your decision. And then we saw Stephanie, and not Ryan. We saw Harris, 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 Harris. Yeah. Um. It was stupid, honestly. I don't know what happens with these two, but I can tell you guys one thing. We have heard rumors, and Stephanie has been spotted with a man in, I believe, Grand Rapids, Michigan, and he did not look like Harris, so I can only imagine these two are not going to work out. Now, when we first saw Harris, I thought Harris was a young, single bachelor with no bags, but apparently, he has three kids and a baby mama who probably thinks she's like in a relationship with this guy. This Harris guy talks and talks and talks, and for whatever reason, Stephanie kind of just believes the crap he's saying. It appears Hears, but we gotta see them go on a date. It honestly, it's a little weird because she was just with his cousin, and it's like he's clearly using her. So obviously the guy wants to, like he doesn't even he'll talk about oh my god, I love her so much, but dude, no, you don't. You just want to come to America, that's it. You want to make more money, and I totally get where the guy's coming from. He wants to make you know money and, and then all that kind of good stuff, but it's like Dude, you're using her, so it's just ridiculous. And not only that, I feel like honestly, his baby mama, who he has three kids with, probably thinks she's in a relationship. I could be wrong, but I would not be shocked if she believes she's in a relationship with him because he's a flirt, he's all over the place. I would not be very shocked. But we gotta see Ryan or Harris, not even Ryan. We gotta see Ryan's cousin Harris with Stephanie. They went on a date. 
It, they were doing a lot of this. It was just very bizarre. Stephanie, honestly, seemed like she was kind of a little on. A, she was like, oh, definitely on a little something, something. I don't know what she was on, but she was definitely on a little something, something. <laughs> she was on something, something for sure, because she just seemed out of it. But after that, Stephanie and Harris, believe it or not, did not get together in a romantic fashion. I don't know why, but they did not. We believe the next day, however, they had a big old day together, they were doing all this kind of stuff together, and then I believe they probably did end up getting together in some fashion. Then they ended up uh, FaceTiming her psychic Maria Shaw, who came on this channel, so that was kind of funny to see her again, but they, they FaceTimed her Maria, liked what she saw, I guess. I don't know why, but I, I guess she liked what she saw with Harris, and she was basically saying that it might be good to go, but the, the baby mama, that was the concern, was the baby mama, and it was like, I'm not even a psychic. I can tell you, yeah, the baby mama will probably get in the way, so I don't have... I don't think Stephanie has any business whatsoever getting with Harris. If she does, that'll probably be a gigantic mistake, but we're going to have to wait and see. I wish both of them well, but I just do not. And the, the, the dumb thing was Stephanie kept saying, well, maybe we'll, maybe we we're supposed to work me and Harris. No, you're not. Stephanie, I said on the integrator with her, I said it again, just meet a guy in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Then we saw Tariq and Hazel, and they basically have this, the, the, they have one thing going on all season. That is Minty. Now it's just this whole third relationship thing. I don't understand what happened because Hazel and Tariq both want a third girlfriend. However, there was this person that Tariq was talking to who was a lady that Hazel got super jealous of. Not Minty, another person. So I, you know, it's like I get why Hazel would be jealous because Tariq was going behind her back talking to a different woman in the Philippines who was not Hazel or Minty and even Minty. She was she was jealous enough about Minty, but it was a new, a new girl. And so she, she was mad about that, but it's like, I get why you're jealous. The thing I have an issue with is you're trying to add a girl to this relationship. So what do you, I mean, it's like, what do you think? It just, it doesn't make any sense to me. It's really freaking stupid. I wonder if he could get a second K-1 visa for the other woman. Probably not, because he would have to marry them. So probably not. But either way, it is just kind of stupid. They were there. They were fighting. Then we got to see Tariq get on one knee and I guess like re-propose to her. And he apologized. And Hazel thought it was all sweet. And it was sunshine and rainbows. And honestly, I feel like 99% of the relationship is sunshine and rainbows. But the producers at TLC just say, hey, you guys haven't fought nearly enough this season. And you guys better stop, start fighting. So they were kind of going at it for a minute about this third girlfriend, blah, blah, blah. I don't know if he wanted her as a third girlfriend or if he was just kind of chatting with her. If he was just chatting with her, I mean, that, that begs the question, well, was it cheating? Because you want a third girl. So it is it's stupid. It's ridiculous. Tariq and Hazel, very boring. Not much going on with them. Then we got to see Rebecca and Ziad. And this is where it kind of got hilariously interesting. Now, I don't know the first thing about Ramadan, so I can't even comment. I literally, if you know anything about Ramadan, comment below. But the deal is, Rebecca and Ziad, they're living together. When she was overseeing him, you know, they were together in a romantic fashion. So they're definitely not waiting for marriage or anything like that. But now this holiday for Ramadan has come around and because of that, Ziad said we cannot live together until we get married because of Ramadan. And I don't really know why. I don't know a thing about the religion. I don't know if this is fake. I don't know if this is real. I don't know anything to even comment. Rebecca was basically saying though, okay, you don't even seem to give a crap about your religion until now. Now that Ramadan's here, you're some, you know, devote Muslim, but before you didn't even seem to give a crap. And the thing I will say is I don't, you know, honestly, I kind of agree with Rebecca because it's like, if they were romantic in, you know, the good old fashioned bedroom, okay, now that Ramadan's here, they can't even live together. Like, it just seems like it's one extreme or the other with Ziad, and I don't know if this was fake, or maybe he is just so big into this religion, I don't really know, but he's never mentioned the religion much before, and now all of a sudden he kind of does. So I do understand where he's coming from, kind of, but it is like, dude, if you are not willing to pay for it, I mean, what are you going to do? Because he, he, he can't pay for a new apartment, and you can't even get an apartment for what, you know, he, I guess he'd get a hotel or an Airbnb, but that'd be super freaking expensive. So it's like, you can't complain if you can't do anything about it. And Ziad, if you can't afford a place, you can't really do anything about it. Now, you know, uh, Rebecca could probably go stay with her daughter, Tiffany, or one other one of her family members, but that, that's kind of stupid too. So if I was Ziad, just sleep on the couch. I mean, really, if it's that big of a deal to you, sleep in a different room and you'll probably be fine. But it's like, apparently he's, he's putting his foot down and Rebecca has agreed to marry him before Ramadan, which that's crazy in itself because if you don't already know, she married her other ex that was, uh, you know, ex before. She, she's, had, she's had freaking like four other, she's three other exes. This is going to be her fourth marriage, I believe. But she married the other ex, um, like really, 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 really quick too. And Zia's only been here for a couple weeks. She's marrying him very quick now because of Ramadan. She's kind of getting pushed into it and she's upset, but she agreed to do it. And it's like, she honestly agrees to probably a bit too much with this guy, but she agreed to marry him. They're going to go forward with it and she was not happy, which, hey, that's a great way to 
to start a freaking marriage, not be happy about marrying the guy you are marrying. So we're going to stay tuned with them, and we also got to see Yara and Jovi, and pfft, you know what? Jovi's a freaking idiot. Now, I think Yara is incredibly rude, like 90% of the time. Not all the time, but a lot of the time. But Jovi, the guy's an idiot, and if I was Yara, I couldn't be with him either. The deal with them is Joey was having a bachelor party. I don't know who, when, hair, who, why, how, or what. I have no idea why they planned the freaking bachelor party like six hours before they were getting ready to go to Vegas to go get married. But the thing for me is, you can't have a bachelor party in Vegas. And honestly, I think he's having another party in Vegas. So it makes literally no sense. But before he's getting ready to go to Vegas, the flight leaves at like 6 a.m. or 5 a.m., really early flight. And it's like, you know, before he goes out, he's out partying with his friends for his bachelor party before he goes to Vegas at the number one bachelor party city in the whole world. But that's what he's doing. So they're going out. They're at an adult, you know, dancer club. And one thing leads to another. Joey ends up, you know, watching a dance with a lady if you know what I mean, an exclusive dance, and it's just stupid, and I get it. Guys are going to be guys. Guys are dumb, and they want to do stuff like that. I totally get it. The thing I have a problem with is Yara, if you don't already know, slipped like a couple hours before, and she didn't feel good, and she's pregnant, and it's like, you're going to Vegas. Go do this stupid party and crap in Vegas, and your flight leaves in like five or six hours. So it really made absolutely no sense why he was doing this, but he was out with his friends, his stupid friend Kaz, who was, you know, one buying him the dance and everything. It was just stupid, ridiculous. I feel like Jovi, after watching that, I'm like, you know what? I don't know if he has a partying problem, but God, he does it a heck of a lot. And and it's like, if I was, you know, it's just, it's just, it's like, it doesn't make any sense. Like he told Yara he was gonna stop drinking while she's pregnant. Well, that sure never happened because he was out partying again. So I can get why Yara was pretty frustrated, but she ended up, she, she wanted him to come back at 11. He came back at like 1.30. She was really mad. And the dumbest thing was, instead of just kind of tiptoeing, you know, tap dancing back in the house real quiet with the lights off, he turned all the lights on. He was talking to her. Hey, Yara, you know, he's doing all this stuff. It's like it's 1.30 in the morning. Your flight leaves at like 5 a.m. Go to bed, turn the lights off, and shut up. But he was run, running his big mouth. And I mean, I can, I can only imagine how mad she was. And she was really upset. And the next day, she was even more upset because she was like, I told you to come back at 11. You came back at 1.30. You were late. And it just goes to show that you don't give a crap about me at all. And I kind of understand where Yara's coming from. So I think she can be a tad bit annoying sometimes. But in this situation, I am honestly kind of team Yara. I feel like Joey's being super freaking rude. But the funny thing was, they get to Vegas. And we got to see in a preview of the video. They made it to Vegas. And guess what Joey's doing? He's going out again. So it's like, well, couldn't you just gone out in Vegas just a one time, you know, just one time and that's it. Now do the bachelor party in Louisiana and now do another one. It doesn't make any freaking sense to me. So I don't know. He was, Joby was kind of honestly making me pretty freaking mad in the last episode. And no, boo-hoo, cry me a river. We did not get to see um, Brandon and Julia. They're still there. They're still running around. They are clearly still together, I believe, but we did not get to see them. Boo-hoo. But that was about it. Pretty good episode, honestly. Andrew and Amira and Mike and Natalie really, I mean, they really stood out to me and I'm just sitting here biting my nails literally wondering um what happens with Mike and Natalie and if I had to guess it'll probably be something really stupid like you know we, we so we got to see we did get to see Natalie drive away with the neighbor Tamara with our luggage and Mike was kind of hooting and hollering hey you know you see you say wait no and then they were, they were getting ready to go but I would not be shocked this would be so dumb but I would not be shocked if all of a sudden Tamara the girl driving the car stops the car and Mike opens the door and he says I'm sorry and he gets on one knee again and says will you marry me I would not freaking be shocked and if he does that that would just be so incredibly stupid and such a freaking cliffhanger. But what would be really cool is if maybe she left or she went back to Ukraine and then she came back. I don't know, something, something more suspenseful. But if she just, you know, if, she, if, he, if he just stops her and they get married, there's no suspense. There's no mystery. It's just freaking boring. Andrew and Amira, I only have one comment. I know most people don't like Andrew. And honestly, most people don't like Amira. I don't have enough. I think both these people are just out of their, off their, they're off their freaking rocker. That's all I'm going to say about both, both of these people. Andrew, he doesn't seem to make much sense to me. The guy appears to be like a freaking teddy bear nice guy, but I don't know if he's just faking it. I don't know if he's a liar. I don't know. I don't even freaking care. And Amira, she seems to be all positive, happy, you know, lovey-dovey, love and love, but it's like, I don't freaking know. I've heard all this stuff about Amira too. I don't 
no, I don't care. I'm not going to pick a side. The only thing I am going to say is if Amira does not get on that freaking flight from Serbia to America, she has no business whatsoever not getting on that plane because if she doesn't like it in America, she can get on a plane within 30, 60, even 90 days and go back to freaking France. So if she does not get on that plane, I am going to be livid. But anyway, you guys, 90 Day Fiance, sorry for that little rant, but I'm telling you, that would just like, just give it a shot. Amira, even though it's already happened in like July, give it a freaking shot. But anyway, 90 Day Fiance, great episode. Make sure you comment below what y'all have to say. Hit the like button, hit the share button, hit the comments below, hit the uh, follow or subscribe button, and y'all better stay tuned for many more videos.